Man, I really hope they behead the demon this episode. <laughs> or soon. It would mean so much to me. It will mean so much to me when it happens. And then this turned out to be unbelievably dark. Opening some crazy doors for the future. It's always so cool how openings just take on new life the farther you get into an arc. Episode 9. Defeating an upper rank demon. Again, this confident title. But first, flashback. I'm sort of getting this Tengen backstory as we battle this upper ranking demon. One for my homies, Japanese style. <sighs> and, yeah, one for me. That's a critical part of the equation as well. This is such a fantasy, like, just three hot wives just staring at him lovingly. Who? <laughs> what kind of question is that? You're my least favorite wife. We just take so much pleasure in watching you eat. She's secretly his favorite wife. I think I know the ranking here. I'm getting the sense of the hierarchy. Of course, he can't admit that openly, but deep down, he's got a ranking. Seems to balance things out for the, the heaven of a life that you seem to have. Look at this. This is the most picturesque tomb visit of all time. And he was not lying. He better not die. <laughs> An erotic breeze rolls in. You know, he's a six foot, six feet tall stud who can fight like a true warrior, but he's also got a sensitive side. Ultimate man. I feel like someone's gonna die. I don't trust this flashback. Yeah, literally they're falling from the sky like rain. Oh yeah, the fight. <laughs> Almost forgot. Right, right, that quick upper ranking demon regeneration speed. I always wonder how fast they're talking in these moments. That's terrifying. Wow, that was a flashy attack. And it continues. <laughs> Damn. He was on his back foot a little bit. I have a really bad feeling. She was the one who got singled out with- oh no. She got singled out with that Sakura Blossom. That marked her for death. Where's the Nitsu and Inusuke? They're supposed to be holding down the, the fabric attacks. Oh no. Oh no. The fact that she's getting so much focus makes me very suspicious. And a future plan. Ah, uh, you've doomed yourself to death. Well, this is a pretty foregone conclusion. At least he'll still have his favorite wife. This has been set up thematically, though, I think. Assuming I'm right. But they're talking about running away. The conclusion that they drew from that conversation, which I liked, is that it's not necessarily about what you do in a particular moment, like whether or not you run away, but more about what you stand for and how you view yourself. As long as you're not ashamed, is I think what she said. Tengen has taken responsibility for that role of being last on the list, right? But it's sort of not his call. Those are his priorities as they appear to him. And that's great and admirable, but it's also the right of other people to make that choice for themselves as well. There's a really weird thing about self-sacrifice where there is a line you know, there's elements of it that are really noble, but there's also great potential for selfishness. At the end of the day, what choice do you have but to do your best while also respecting other people trying to do their, their best? And if things go well, you have people taking care of each other. Or this could be a, just a masterful fake out, and she doesn't die at all. Like, we, we rescue her. Right, because he's never been useful up to this point. Yeah, from the beginning, that's been their, their greatest advantage, arrogance. It doesn't have it left. I can literally hear the stamina bar bottoming out. Man, if that isn't even a motto for life. <laughs> it covered a lot of distance real fast. Is that a combination of water and fire? He like supplemented the fire move with the water move? Interesting. But allows him some of the stamina. Yeah. 
And again, I feel like this is all a metaphor for Tanjiro. It's all a metaphor for what makes Tanjiro important. He's going to be the most useful and most powerful when he is the most free, if that makes sense, and is the most himself. And I think that is exactly what people are recognizing in him, is that potential. There's this really neat idea forming with Tanjiro where his power seems to be ascending in tandem with his ability to break the mold and be creative with who he is in relation to tradition, if that makes sense. It's not so explicit, and maybe I'm overreading into it, but I, I feel like there's something big there. Like, he's unlocking pieces of himself and making connections that has a fighting counterpart. And extrapolating that, I feel like the Tanjiro that the story needs is the Tanjiro that he already is, but is sort of buried under other stuff that has not been allowed to become fully free yet. And the ultimate freedom would be Tanjiro as he really is with the structure of the people who helped him, if that makes sense, both at once. What a time for a mid card. That's a, a nice one. There they are. I see they're just busy fighting the extensions of the, the scarves. <laughs> I'm, I'm really hoping they're going to kill um, this demon as well. He has time to pause and, and watch and sightsee. Yes, I'm so happy they're working in a team. Zenitsu has been so left out up to this point. They're going to pull this off. <laughs> this wild man rampage. That'll always do it. Speaking of being yourself. I just destroyed my computer. That's how good that, that slash was. This is a pairing I didn't know I needed. For real. He's so much cooler when he sleeps. Sounds like a like the man. Yeah, exactly. Look at him. He is. And appreciation for Venusuke is a huge deal, too. What's wrong? <laughs> Who are you? I didn't recognize you anymore. What is going to do it? What is going to be the thing that brings him down? Damn. With his teeth. Oh my god, what just happened? Is he just holding on to that blood tornado? Yes. Oh man, this is giving me what I want. This is such a well-conceived fight. There's just no way it can go wrong. Like, the Tanjiro and Uzui combination is amazing in itself, but somehow I'm even happier that it's the three of them banding together. I've been kind of waiting for this for so long. Yeah, it's actually a pretty good matchup. The three of them versus this lesser demon. And Tengen versus the creepy I am pathetic demon. The poison's taking an effect, though. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. The three of them take out this demon and then they're free to help in the battle. You got any more of those poison arrows? This has got me thinking about elemental combinations. Lightning plus water. We had water plus fire already in this episode. You humans and your weaknesses. Tanjiro's already, like, kind of split in half. Yeah, they're all they're all thinking about Rengoku. He's so present in this whole arc. He's strategizing. <laughs> Damn, this is cool. I would really love it if Inosuke was the one. Awesome shot. I think Inuske take the lead too. Or Inuske just taking the lead. Man, this is beautiful. My underlings. I mean, he's earned it. Or he's earning it at this moment. The backup though. He's just gotta clear a path. His voice got deeper too. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice! <laughs> Man! And he's taking damage on the way. This is for Rengoku. <laughs> yeah, feel it. Feel the fear. Please get it done. He's got something left deep down. Oh my god! This is brutal! It's perfect. Yes! Oh my god, that was so satisfying. That whole thing was so satisfying. Wait, but is it really over? Y yes, it was it was brutal. We saw it. Right, right. And she's still going. Let Inuske have this victory, please. I want the three of them to have this victory so badly. 
That's actually a pretty solid plan. I mean, he definitely did his part. I knew this was going to be amazing. It's great how much this exceeded my expectations. As badass as Tengen is, for me, it's just naturally more satisfying to have the three of them fighting as a trio, playing the respective roles, and Inosuke being the one to come up with the strategy and then execute in a way that is sort of on brand for him, you know, on character. The fight's not over, but already that was such a massive victory, just spiritually, for the three of them who were there to witness Rengoku's death. And also, this is just a massive payoff for the journey they've had together, especially all the training. You imagine they know each other really well and know their styles really well. And maybe more importantly, that they trust each other. Wild man, I come from the forest. I live alone, Inosuke. Basically rushing in headfirst, trusting Zenitsu and Tanjiro to clear a path for him. Putting his life in their hands is excellent. And now the three of us can fight. Pathetic demon. <laughs> Best job. Important role. No! No, it was a victory! It was a spiritual victory! The poison is the least of it. What is going on? Oh, no. This is not happening. No, we, we got turned a corner. Oh, I hate you. Oh, I hate you for doing this to me. I don't blame you for wanting to give up. That's sort of how I feel too right now. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> this was just whiplash on my expectations this episode. I thought that the number two ranked wife was going to die. She's fine. And that's great and all. But then everyone else died after what I thought would, was a major turning point and a moral and spiritual victory for our characters who have been through so much already. I've been speaking this whole episode about the demon's biggest weakness being arrogance, thinking that victory was assured. Well, it looks like that arrogance was inside of me the entire time. <laughs> Thinking that this was going to be a victory and that we had this in the bag. Betrayal aside, this episode was amazing. I think my favorite in this arc so far. The action throughout, especially in the last couple episodes, has been fantastic. But there's just something about the three of them finding it together that just takes it to an another level emotionally for me. And then the, the sucker punch, the gut punch at the end, left a hole in me bigger than the one in Rogoku, which is emotionally compelling at least. And creates a pretty amazing setup for the next couple episodes, wondering what, what the hell is going to come next. It was already a difficult fight and now Zui died. Inuscape died. Tanjiro died. Can't trust Nezuko for anything anymore. What is even left to pull out of the bag in the next couple episodes? Oh yeah, I forgot about the Taisho secret. Nin Nin! What's the, what's the Taisho secret that we're all mortal? Life is fleeting. Pain is inevitable. Or is it just building... Uh, building suspense. That's definitely a title that we need right now. <laughs> I'll take any inspiration I can get at this point. But like I said, the positive of this is that it's going to be really amazing if they actually can win, which I still think they will. They have to. I can't take it. But yeah, all jokes aside, this was an unbelievable episode. On a more positive note, if I can summon it out of me, never give up, set your heart ablaze, etc. I got to give a huge thank you to all my patrons for the support, for making these videos possible, for keeping the lights on, for insulating me from the insane amount of copyright claims and one copyright strike I've gotten recently, and to the whole community just for being awesome, like always, just day in and day out, unfailingly, setting my heart ablaze with love. A special shout out goes to those who joined the top tier on Patreon recently. Kristaman, Maku Maku, Michaela Griffin, Mario Jacob, and Conan. Thank you to you and thank you to all patrons for all the love and support. Thanks everybody for watching and see you next time when we don't give up and get a victory that I so sorely desire.